This is a gentleman, 47 years old. Uh, a 900 activation is what we call our trauma activations at San Francisco General Hospital. So he comes in as a trauma activation. Uh, he witnessed, uh, it was a witness fall off his couch. He hit his head, fell off his couch, hit his head, lost consciousness. Friend called 911, ambulance brought him in. In the field, he was a GCS of 14. Uh, and in the ED, he was a GCS of 14. So uh, since I'm assuming this is geared towards uh, medical students, giving this a medical student uh, training center, uh, I want to really get you guys geared up to how to present these patients when you're on your clinical rotations uh, or when you're an intern, which uh, will come hopefully coming up soon for some of you. Uh, so when your patients are coming in with a head trauma, it's really important to know the sequence of events and what happened in the field and to try to get as much information as you can. Whether or not the event was witnessed is actually very pertinent because, say, a witnessed head trauma would have a totally different differential than a non-witnessed head trauma, right? A non-witnessed head trauma is somebody who was found down. Uh, that may have been a sinkable event. Uh, it may have been uh, if some other etiology besides a trauma uh, that caused them to fall. Whereas if somebody is witnessed having a, a head strike, then you know that it was a trauma um, and not, you know, say aneurysm or, or ruptured AVM or, or some other thing that would make them uh, syncopize and have uh, blood in their head. So it's really important to know the sequence of events, whether or not the if this was witnessed, the loss of consciousness is very significant because that takes the level of trauma, the level of brain trauma to another level, right? Loss of consciousness uh, is different than someone who hits their head and doesn't have loss of consciousness or someone who hit their head, and maybe has a little post-traumatic amnesia or maybe has a little bit of confusion, but didn't lose consciousness. Those are all different uh, gradations of, of how severe the head trauma is. So that gives you an, an idea that this is relatively severe if this patient lost consciousness and if it was witnessed. And then what was their GCS in the field? What was it in the ED? It gives you sort of a sequence of events. They'll tell you the trajectory of this patient. So if they're 14 in the field and they're an eight in the ED, that tells you they're heading the wrong direction. If they were say an eight in the field and they're 14 in the ED, that tells you they're heading the other direction. So maybe they're really severely concussed and they're recovering. But that'll give you again, some idea of where this patient's trajectory is gonna take them. And this is very important information when you're presenting these patients uh, to your upper levels or your attendings or what have you. Uh, to be able to convey this. So if, if you have this information offhand and you can give that sort of picture, paint that picture, um, then that will really help you out. History and physical, vital signs are vitals, right? We all look at the vital signs. Uh, you know, you may be called down and as a med student, you may be the first person from the neurosurgery team there at the trauma bay. Uh, and you may be asked to uh, evaluate that patient while you know your residents are doing something else. So get a good look at the patient, get sort of a, a feel for the gestalt. What does that trauma bay look like? Are there a bunch of frantic people running around? Is it a little more calm? Uh, has everyone left the trauma bay and there's just a nurse typing in the corner uh, charting things? So get an idea of what the gestalt is for that patient. Uh, so here, vital signs. Again, vital signs are vital, so know what's going on there. This is a patient who's relatively stable, heart rate's slightly elevated, uh, but otherwise really no concerning signs on the vital signs. So that tells you that there's, this is a stable patient. Um, you can really take your time. There's nothing super urgent about this. He's awake, he's alert, but he's confused. So that, that head injury he had from falling off his couch is persistent. Uh, you're getting a confused patient. He has signs of head trauma. Again, with the fact that this is a witnessed fall, a witnessed head trauma, uh, and he has physical exam signs, he's got a big swollen goose egg on his head. That tells you that this is probably, if there's an intracranial hemorrhage, it's probably from traumatic etiology, and he didn't have some other syncopal event that caused him to fall and hit his head. Uh, so the head trauma is going to be uh, the, the big thing here. Do his GCS, know how to do your GCS. Uh, it's relatively simple. You should be able to rattle it off without having to look it up uh, by the time you're on any sort of clinical rotation. So be able to get a good, accurate GCS. <laughs> And then look for any sort of uh, <clears throat> focal neurologic deficits. So in a patient who's alert and confused, probably not going to be able to follow enough commands to do a focused neurologic exam, but you can still look for any focal neurological science. Does he have a facial droop? Uh, if he's confused and he's reaching for different things, is he favoring one hand versus the other? Is he not using his right hand? Uh, is he not using his right leg? Is he not moving his legs, but he's moving his arms? Those are all important things to see if there's any sort of focal neurologic deficit. Look at the pupils. Are his pupils reactive? Then, you know, a lot of times these presentations, they'll kind of just give you the, the pertinent labs. Well, here, uh, I'm just giving you everything because this is what it's going to look like, right? When you look up your labs on Epic uh, or on whatever your EMR may be. So you've got all these labs. What are you going to do with this? What are the important things to look at? Well, of course, you know, any patient, you want to look at their basic CBC. So is this patient anemic? Uh, you know, hemoglobin's 13. That looks okay. Um, platelet count, always important. So always take a look at the platelet count, any trauma. Always take a look at the INR and the, the coagulation profile. Well, there's some other important things here on this patient's profile that I'll highlight for you here. Uh, so who, 
what, what type of person really falls off their couch and has a head strike? Well, that's somebody that maybe has a little bit of a drinking problem um, with the elevated AST tells you this is a chronic drinking problem with an elevated ETOH of 384. That tells you he's a chronic drinker and he's drunk. Um, and also with a platelet count of 149, that's the lower limit of normal. Uh, but one thing you know about people who drink, they're probably not going to have platelets that are all that functional. Uh, so these are really important things to look at in this specific patient. They may give you an idea that uh, whatever uh, injury you find might be a little bit more than just mild. So here's a set CT. Here we come to the, the topic of the talk, subdural hematoma. So this patient has a very small subdural hematoma. Here's a nice arrow pointing right at it. But this very small subdural hematoma, you might think that's nothing. But again, in a patient who you're worried that he maybe did have uh, completely working platelets, that's something you're going to want to definitely keep an eye on. Hey, everyone. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.